Hello, my name is Mary McCarthy, and today I'd like to share with you some tips on how to practice downward facing dog, Adamukha Svanasana. This is a very common pose taught in yoga classes, beginner and advanced. This practice of downward facing dog has many benefits because it's both an inversion and a forward fold. It strengthens the arms and the legs and starts to open up the feet, the calves, the back of the legs known as the hamstrings, the spine, and in the shoulders. As a beginner, it can be very challenging to do this practice or posture. However, as the body starts to open up, downward facing dog can be used as a resting pose. Let's begin on our hands and knees. As you come down to your hands and knees, place the shoulders directly over the wrist and the hips right over the knees. This starts in tabletop. If we moved right into downward facing dog from here, our dog would be a little short. So what is helpful is to place our hands one handprint forward. Widen your hands as wide as your shoulders, or if you have tight shoulders, take them out a little wider, rotating the hands even out at about 45 degrees. But commonly the hands are forward. Once you press down into the mound of the thumb and the mound of the first finger, you can feel all 10 fingertips pressing into the earth. With the arms now, roll or move the eyes of the elbows forward. And this starts to create an external rotation to the shoulder blades, allowing the shoulder blades to come more firmly on the back. Now that your arms are set, you'll curl your toes under, and by pressing down and forward with the hands, the hips go up and back. Now, a very common thing that happens with beginners is that they'll straighten their legs and because their back and legs are tight, they'll round their back. Then this will feel very uncomfortable and hard in the arms. However, if you bend the knees deeply, the spine can get long and by pressing down and forward with the hands, you can lift the inner shoulders up. You do want to create some space between the ears and the arms. And that happens when you externally rotate the shoulders and draw the shoulder blades more on the back. Now, as your body opens up, you can start to stretch even one leg towards the floor more or the heel. And this is known as walking the dog or pedaling your feet. When you begin to feel the legs open up, you can lift both heels up high and then stretch them towards the floor, keeping the spine nice and long. And then this is your posture. Lower the knees back to the floor, and we're gonna talk about a few modifications. One of the modifications is that our wrists can hurt. And so if you found a towel or some kind of fabric, even a rolled up old um, yoga mat, you would lift the wrist away from the floor and open up the angle. Because if the wrist hurts by bending at 90 degrees, lifting the wrist up away from the floor starts to open the wrist joint. So you would put the mounds of the finger on the mat, so you still have your sticky grip, and then the palms or back by the wrist on your support. Then you would try it again. By pressing down and forward with the hands, the hips come up and go back, and you can lengthen the spine. Another modification with downward facing dog, is if it is challenging to bear weight in the hands, you can modify what's known as puppy dog pose. Puppy dog pose is an in-between posture from child's pose to downward facing dog. 
And by walking your arms forward, allowing the arms to engage, but not uh, place so much weight or bare weight in the hands, you can start to work the elements of the upper body, lengthening the spine by keeping the knees down. And you can start to really work on opening up in the shoulder joints. Another way to begin to open up in downward facing dog is with a chair. So this chair can be very helpful. And by placing it on a sticky mat, it will help the chair not move. When you come to face the seat of the chair, place the hands on the seat of the chair just like you would on a mat. Then you walk your feet back, lowering your head in line with your arms. You'll do the same action with the hands, pressing down into the mound of the thumb and the first finger. Lift the inner shoulders up and externally rotate them. Now, if you are forward a lot, you'll find that rounding of the spine again. And over time, that will not feel good. So we walk our feet back, keeping our heels on the ground and then bend the knees to get really long here, like we did it on the floor. Once our legs open up, we can start to press the thighs back. And each time we breathe in and out, we send the breath down into the belly, exhaling, drawing the navel into the spine to support the back. This can release some tension in the spine and neck, create benefits of calming the mind and opening the back of the body. When you're done, you can look forward, walk in and stand up. I hope these tips today have helped you move into your posture of downward facing dog a little easier. It is a practice that you can come to each time to open up the shoulders and the legs.